Hello and welcome to Reinfused. Today we are following on from our Bandai Wonder Swan uh, screen replacement by replacing one of our Game Gear screens. This Game Gear has a, no screen, the screen does not work at all. It's been recapped and everything so we know that it's, uh, it's not that, but it's uh, so we need to replace the screen entirely. So we have found another version on AliExpress of Game Gear replacement screen and we're going to see what it's like. Hopefully it works. <laughs> Right, so here we are with our Game Gear. Now, this one, yeah, has a completely broken screen. Pretty sure that's all that's wrong with it. Guess we'll find out, or we won't. Hopefully something will happen that's good, you know. Uh, so here's our kit. Comes in this little polystyrene box. Uh, it is vastly more <laughs> complicated than the uh, we have a simple one we did on the Bandai Wonder Swan. Uh, so we have printed out <laughs> the instructions. Yeah, this, like the Wonder Swan, this didn't come with any instructions in the box. But the site that I got it from on AliExpress does have, yeah, these didn't print in a particularly efficient manner. Um, and my printer is, is slowly dying, as you can see. Um, but anyway, this should hopefully. <laughs> help us with the printing stuff, uh, putting stuff together anyway. Um, yeah, vastly more complicated uh, as we can see. Anyway, I guess we start by taking this apart. That's the, the easy part after all. Uh, it's mostly just Phillips screws apart from this flathead here for some reason. Right, so yeah, there we go, it's open. Yeah, seven screws in total. So the Phillips head ones are all the same type, which is good. Uh, two are hidden in the battery compartments. And then the, the random flat one is its own screw. So that's kind of easy for putting it back together. Put those to one side. And here we have our Game Gear board. Now the first thing is we need to see if this is actually compatible with this uh, board. Now most are, the only ones that are not supported are the Majesco Game Gear VA4 and VA5 and I'm pretty sure those are much later than these ones. Right so uh, yeah right here you can see uh, upside down but still uh, A377996 so that means this is a VA0 so completely compatible and I think the also the easier one to do. Uh, although you know, both <laughs> both are challenging. Right. So I guess what we don't really need the top board. Oh, you know what we should do is just they're all these capacitors okay. Oh, you know what? I've quite plainly recapped this board and I didn't have surface melt ones, so I just use normal ones. Uh, that's not great soldering. This was done quite a while ago, I would imagine. So anyway, we can remove some of these. Did these come out? I'm sure they come out right. Yeah, there we go, that one. And come on, unhinged, there we go. So with these out, come on, there we go. Because I don't think we need to do anything with this board, so put that bit to one side and then we can uh, start dismantling this now there's no point looking at the instructions for this we literally have to dismantle it right we know we're gonna have to remove the backlight because there's no point in that being there did I not convert this to LED lights the transformer is still there so I can't suggest that I didn't anyway I guess I wouldn't have bothered because the the screen wasn't working There we go, so we can put that to one side as well. So 
So, this is the game gear. Here's our ribbon cable. So we have to, we're gonna have to desolder all that off to take this screen off. Um, I don't think we need this plastic fitting anymore. Um, it shouldn't be too hard to get off if we do. Uh, but yeah, so I guess we have to move to the soldering station then, because I don't really want to do things like <laughs> soldering at that small pitch uh, over here. I put it over there where I've got magnifying glasses and, and uh, microscopes and things. So let's take this over to the bench. All right, so first of all, we're going to get rid of the uh, fluorescent lamp, and that's soldered in with these two points here. Once those points are out, then it should just fall out. Uh, we'll literally just we'll just heat them up. There we go. That's one out and two out. We're not going to reuse those points, so there's no worry about clearing them out. That's that fluorescent lamp out of the way. I believe that works, so someone might find that useful if they're going to if their backlight's gone out, but they want to keep their Game Gear Cherry. Right. Now next, we have to get rid of this screen. Now the way we're going to do that is we're just going to use some solder braid across at these points and it should remove it. So I'm going to put some flux on it. Almost straight. Uh, and we'll take some solder braid, which is over here. There we go. And we just lay it across our points, get our soldering iron, and just take it along. And it should remove most of the solder. Right. This is also glued as well. Yeah, it's glued on the back. Um, right, so yeah, once we got rid of the uh, tape that's on both sides, then the screen just kind of comes off. I've then gone over with a soldering iron and solder just to uh, Clean up any residue that was on there. They should, I think, now, now take solder okay. Right, well, that's the easy bit anyway. <laughs> Shouldn't we have done that wrong, of course. Um, now comes the bit part of actually installing this thing. And yeah, like I said, this is a complicated beast. So, like the, uh, the Wonders One, it comes with wire, all one color again, which is is it a number of points you have to do? Kind of interesting. So we've got two boards in bubble wrap in here. We've got this, which is our driver board, and you can see the number of contacts on there. Now, a lot of these we don't have to do. They're just, if you want to include, you can add a VGA port if you want to for some reason. So a lot of these are for doing that. We don't want to do that, so it's not quite so complex, but there are still quite a few points we have to do. And there's the actual LCD, which just fits into uh, a port on the driver board. And there is a replacement lens as well. I may or may not use it, I don't know yet. There's also some resistors, because there are some changes we have to make to the actual board. Right, fun. <laughs> Let's uh, work out what we're supposed to be doing. All right, so I guess this is kind of a view of what we have to do. So those are the points we need to solder to the actual motherboard. Those you have to solder to the brightness wheel. 
It's in good brightness, so it's quite a few points, but not so bad when you actually compare it to the number of points that's on the actual uh, board. So, okay, yeah, looking on this side, oh, there we go. Looking on this side, we can actually see they're actually labeled. So yeah, those are the points we have to label and the P1 and P2 in the corner there. Still quite a few. Right, so yeah, so there's two sets of instructions. So there's this one, which has got uh, for certain boards, which has got the one ASIC. So that's a set of instructions for that. And that's two pages worth. And this one, which is also two pages worth. Excellent. Right. So, um, so we need to remove R33, 34, 32, 30, 29, 41, 38, 44, 43, no resistors. Remove L2 coil, Q6, Q2 transistors. Also remove Q3 and Q4. C32, C33 capacitors, remove LCD, done that, yep. Yeah. Remove middle screw mounting of the upper housing with pliers. The upper housing. Oh, does it mean this? Hmm. I guess, I mean, okay. Really don't want to do that, but I guess we have to. <clears throat> Remove CFL lamp, done, and fuses FU1 and FU2. Sounds rude. <laughs> um, check the 5 volt with voltmeter at VCC ground of the gain gear. If the voltage exceeds 5.54, repair your GG, otherwise the GG won't be damaged. Okay, well, we will check that. Mine should be fine. It wasn't that long ago. Um, recapped, which is what it's talking about. So we don't care about the VJ connector. We're not doing that. Okay slide the GG PCB and solder the data line. So I guess it means slide it into here, that cavity there. Uh, first order one wire to VCC the GG mod and one wire to the ground of the GG mod and leave the other ends. Slide it in. Don't confuse them. <laughs> what? Okay, solder one wire from T10 to 211. Now solder one wire from clock 32 of the GG mod to FB1 of the Game Gear BC PCB. So the one wire from GG SMS of the GG mod to pin 42 of the Game Gear card slot. Now there, yep, yeah, that's fine. We're just gonna. That's fine. So the six wires from the old LCD ribbon. Pin 9, pin 16, pin 18, pin 20, pin 39, and pin 37 to CL2, D1, D0, DW, D2, and D3 of the GG mod. And then check all the, all the connections. <laughs> okay, this is fairly involved, I guess. We just, uh, well, we don't get anything done by not doing it, do we? So uh, let's, let's do this thing. I guess we'll remove R34, 33, 34. These resistors. Oh blimey, okay, so they're in this really dense <laughs> collection of and me having these non-service mounts on is probably going to make things a bit harder. Oh wow, some of these are really bad. So there's one right down there which is right by the brightness wheel. That's going to be tricky to remove without damaging the brightness wheel. Alright, let's just do this. So there's 34, there's 32, 33 one of them, yep. And there's 33 up there. Alright, okay, this is going to be tricky. Right, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the bigger bits first because it needs you to remove this coil and this capacitor. So I may as well get rid of those now. I assume we don't need T1, right? It's not so much to get rid of that. Okay, maybe it does need that then, so we won't remove that. Fine. But yeah, so we can get rid of these these bigger bits here. I'm going to kind of do this off screen, I think. 
Okay, so all of the components I think have now been removed. Um, they're all capacitors, so it's almost impossible to tell. But <laughs> so that's mostly that's that. I think most of the first sheet done. Um, these two here as well. They had on a different sheet, so I was worried that they weren't supposed to be removed for some reason. But I couldn't find any caveats to it, so I just removed them. So let's hope that was right. Right. So what's next on the sheet then? So uh, remove those. Remove those. Remove those. Remove those. Remove the LCD. Right, remove. Oh, hold on. Filler from. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so remove middle plastic screw mounting in the upper housing with pliers. Right, so this is. I mean, the only thing it can mean is this. That's all I can think it means. I don't know if I want to do that. I mean, I don't have any option, I guess. I mean, I. I uh, well, I haven't really got any option. I'm not going to use pliers, I'm going to use some cutters to just kind of nibble it down to risk, so we don't risk damaging the outside so much. This is the wrong thing, I'm going to be very annoyed. I'm already annoyed that I'm going to do it. <laughs> but if it's the wrong thing as well, I'll be very annoyed. These instructions, by the way, are not great, they're not terrible. You can follow them, but they can be quite vague. Now you can also, I believe, just find the Mac Will, because I think this is basically a clone of Mac Will's screen. So I think you can just find the instructions for that and it will work. I'm assuming they're fairly close. Oh, that went shooting somewhere, but that is most definitely off and flush. Okay. Get rid of the bits that left in there. Right. Ah, okay. It did come off relatively easy. So I guess when they said use pliers, they might have been right. Okay. Uh, now check 5 volt with voltmeter via CC, uh, VCC ground of the game gear. Okay, well that means connecting it back up to power source, so I guess let's go and do that. Okay, I think you can just about see the uh, mold meter. So, uh, ground is about eight in here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about here. And, no, and VCC is about six in from here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And we've got 4.8. That's fine. That's fine. Maybe a little low, but nothing truly bad. So let's turn that off. So I think that passes the, the voltage check then. We can now disconnect all of this. Right, so now we've checked the voltage. Uh, you can see it's 5.45 volts, repair your GG, that's fine. 4.8 is maybe a bit low, but I think it's fine. Uh, right, slide the GG mod into the GGB PCB and solder data lines. Right, first solder one wire to VCC of the GG mod and one wire to ground. So... Uh, there's VCC. Oh, and there's ground. So that's where we're supposed to be... I mean, I guess. So that's easy enough. Let's just add some solder to it to make it easier. It's even easier if you turn the soldering iron on. That's why these digital ones are good, they heat up nice and quick. Okay, so we've got some solder onto our board. So now we need to attach wire. Now are these wires cut or are they literally, is it one big load of wire? It is one big load of wire, okay. Right, that's kind of annoying. I guess we don't need 
particularly long wires though so I mean yeah that's just one big string wire but any particularly long wires do we everything is fairly close together so let's just cut some fairly short lengths of wire for this job side cutters there we go right I mean if we just slide this in here how's that right underneath PCB GG mod right so the PP PCB GG mod according to this here diagram goes on top Fine. So, I mean, okay, if it's that way, it does make a lot more sense. Fair enough. And I can see why it wants us to do the VCC and ground first. Okay. Because they get hidden underneath the cartridge port. So. Let's cut off those two bits of wire, they don't have to be long. That is probably fine. We've got other wire, if we run out, it's fine. <clears throat> now it has a very helpful thing there saying make sure you don't get the, the ground and VCC wires around the wrong way. You know what would have helped? If you had two different colours of wire. That would have helped a lot. But anyway. <laughs> let's, uh, yeah, let's do you. Right, so that is VCC and ground in place. Um, guess we'll bring those around there. Bring them around the bottom edge because there's a gap they can go through. There we go. So then this comes in here. And we're lining these up with these copper pads because we're going to solder those in that's how it's going to be held in and our power wires are coming through a little gap in the front so that's fine so let's line this up we need to be as straight as possible I guess um, Hmm. It's yeah, it doesn't entirely fit, I don't think. <laughs> I guess as long as it's flush with the top when we're fine, right? Yeah, I think that's probably fine. Something in place is going to be interesting. Yeah, that's not working for me. I think what we'll do is we'll take some offcuts of component legs and we'll maybe use that instead. It's kind of odd that they just seem to think that this just works. The board is definitely, I mean, the board is thick. All right, I don't know if it's going to work, but that's what I've done. I've added some component wire in place there. So, I mean, once we've got one in place, maybe we can work harder on the others to try to get them to fit how they want. But yeah, it's never going to have been easy. Okay, it's by no means perfect, but using a bit of flux, I managed to get that board just moved around and in place now. Um, Yeah, I don't think it's a perfect way of doing it, but it's 
a way of doing it. Right, now with that in place, I guess we try to do the other ones, but <laughs> I'm not convinced it's going to be any easier to do that. But we will try. We'll try using flux, why not? Right, back on track. So six in, one, two, three, four, five, six is right there. Alright, let's add a bit of solder to the point. There we go. Right, soldered into place. Now, the ground, let's verify before we do this that it is definitely still ground. We haven't managed to mix them up. Nope, so that's ground. So, yes, that's right. And this wire will fit wonderfully. And I think we're going to have to cut it down. Well, you know what, bit of solder on that point first. <laughs> What's that? The board's broken away from the solder again? No way! I've got the stick wires in there, it's the only way it's going to work. Alright, well anyway, the ground and voltage connectors are connected. Yeah, I'm still certain the wire is the way to go. I've just done some down in there. And that is actually holding it in place, whereas yeah, the, the pure solder points aren't doing great. Anyway, that's another part done. Oh, now comes the big old wiring then. So I'm guessing, right, so effectively these wires will be quite long. So the points are here, right here, and I guess they want the wires to come through this hole and down here, which is where they're going to be connecting. Oh, okay. All right, okay, it's up here. Right, so up here there's thing that's marked T11 and there's T10. So we've got to do a wire from there to there. There we go. So I might just be able to see if the camera's focused. It's black wire coming from here to there, nice and simple. So, okay, that's T10 and T11 connected. One wire from clock 32 megahertz. Oh, I've got one called clock, is that right? Yes, I guess it is. Okay, so they say clock 32 megahertz. Uh, it is actually just called clock, but that's fine. Uh, from clock 32 megahertz to the to FB1 on the Game Gear PCB. Right, so that's X1. So, guessing that's where the Y is going? Fine. <laughs> 
All right, so that's probably correct. I've got no genuine way of knowing. Uh, <clears throat> then solder one wire from GGSMS of the mod to 42 pin, to pin 42. Right, that should be easy enough. Right, our wire done. Okay, so I think we have to connect P1 and P2 to pin 2 and 3 of the brightness control. I think it's even vaguer than most of the other stuff. <sighs> Let's do it anyway. <laughs> now this wire we used earlier, and well didn't use earlier, that might, might just reach. I think mean, it does, I mean, it just reaches, that'd be handy. That one sold a lot better, so interesting. Anyway, those two are connected. I don't think we bridge anything. We good. <coughs> so that's the brightness. Right, so this is the six wires then that we need to whew, do. Oh, to be fair, it does say at the bottom in red writing connect the uh, those, so that's fine. It wasn't just on the first page then. Right then, anyway, this is the big one. Now, obviously, it would be vastly more efficient just to be able to do all the wires at once, but they have only given one colour of wire, so <laughs> that would be way too confusing. Uh, so... So we're doing CL2 first. And the solar is not <laughs> for some reason working. CL2. So through this little cutout, and that needs to go to part of our ribbon here. You see that? Yep. That needs to go. Okay, I think I got that one. This is going to be really annoying, but anyway. That one is in place. None of them are particularly close to each other, which is good. Right, anyhow, next. D1. I think that's it. I think that's all the, the Y's. So I have marked them with white. <laughs> I'm hoping I got those right, and if I did, things will be a lot easier. Those final, final two wires just wanted to bridge, but I think we've done it. I think all those wires are connected and there doesn't appear to be any bridges. Um, well, I mean, all we can do is test it. So, this doesn't tell me to put the connect the screen, but I'm guessing that's what we need to do next. I'm guessing the screen is, is this side then because, yeah, that seems about right. So it can connect like that, I'm assuming. Right, so we need to undo this black clip inside here. We should just do by inching it towards, away from the white clip itself, the white thing. Oh, this is an opening up one. No, it's an opening up one, so okay. So instead you just kind of lift it, it just kind of goes, moves up like that. And then we can just slide that. Come on. I don't want to go in. Oh, 
obviously to uh, Okay, and once that's in, I believe that is, we can do that up and then it will hold it firm. I don't think that's in. Open up again. Okay, it does not want to open up again. So let's just hope that is in. So I guess it just kind of, it will just push against the thing there. I mean, that's metal, so I'm not bridging out against anything. <laughs> um, I'm going to be careful and stick this here, bubble wrap there, and do that. And then if we connect this back up again to the back, The screen lifts up. That's probably a good sign. <laughs> let's let's go and get a game. Yes, we have a screen. <laughs> Incredible. Right, let's button this back up then, and it will actually take a proper look. Right, so it's done. It's buttoned up. Now there are a few issues. Uh, we, you didn't see you put the screen in. And that's one of the issues. So basically, this seems to have been kind of designed to be used with a 3D printed holder. It doesn't mention that at all in the instructions. The instructions, by the way, are terrible. Um, but I did follow them, and it did work, so there's that going for it. Um, so, yeah, what I think whilst if the Mac will screen, which is what this is based on, if you go there, and it shows you how to get the 3D printed bracket and stuff, and I think you can even order it and, and things like that. So whilst this will use the same bracket, it doesn't mention it at all. So you're kind of left swinging in the wind about how to actually mount this. In the end, I've literally stuck it in place <laughs> with um, with some tape. Not ideal. I'll be going back into this anyway because I think I'm going to... Well, I, I, there's some dirt here on the inside of the screen. I didn't notice at the time, so I'm going to have to open it up. Uh, but also because I think I will replace this uh, lens with the one that came with it. So... Yeah, that's a bit of an issue. Uh, I mean, at least they could have come with some double-sided tape or something, and it just didn't, so, yeah. The Wonderswan uh, screen came with everything. It had double-sided tape coming out of the wazoo. So uh, it's a shame, really, that, that this didn't. Um, a lot of the instructions are quite confusing. Again, though, apparently, if you follow the wheel instructions, as I said, they're better, so there's that. But from manufacturer, none are included in the box. The ones that are on the actual page they're very misleading it stops completely about mounting the screen by the way it doesn't even tell you to put the screen into the into the flat flex connector obviously i know how to do that so i did that so yeah they're not very good uh but it's working anyway um <laughs> also uh, it told you to break these bits off of this this is on the back of the uh, machine it's just a bit of shielding really they told you to break these off. Um, I didn't really want to do that. I mean, I, I can see why it's needed to break it off because these go right next to the actual flat flex for the screen and they're, they're quite, yeah, they can be quite sharp. So I can understand why I didn't want to break it though. So I just took it off. I don't think it would make a difference in the long run. So um, that should be fine. But anyway, let's tap power this on and it did work. It did indeed work. I mean, So yeah, the screen's lovely. It's not hugely better than the <laughs> than the stock screen. Obviously, for this one, doesn't matter because uh, the screen was not working. So I had to replace the screen. This this worked just as well um, as any other kind of screen replacement one. So yeah, and it works, and the screen is lovely. Uh, there's no really extra features. You can kind of connect wires and stuff, but most of the extra features are if you use the VGA out. Again, I wasn't interested sure to do it. You can connect the extra wires though and get things like scan lines and stuff. Didn't see the point, so I didn't do it. Um, right, anyway, that's that. It's working. 
It's fine, it's a screen replacement and it worked. It's slightly complex though. Uh, but I'll do that in the wrap up in a second anyway, so let's go and do that now. Okay, it, I mean, it worked. The screen, this game gear wasn't working. Now it is, it has a screen, it looks really nice. Uh, great. <laughs> uh, in terms of the actual um, the mod, um, if you've got a bad screen, or if you're um, no screen at all, then yes, it's probably good. You will have difficulty. I would say whilst the, the Wonderswan mod you could do if you knew which end of the soldering iron to hold, it's really easy. This one requires probably at least like some middling knowledge of, of soldering. It's got very tiny solder points and you're probably as well, if you haven't already <laughs> um, capped, recapped your Game Gear, you're probably going to have to do that as well, unless it's one of the newer ones that have got better um, capacitors. Um, so yeah, this is not for the for the faint-hearted, but it does work, and uh, it's got a lovely picture now. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> right, thanks for watching. If you like the video, please hit like. If you really like the video, please hit subscribe. If you didn't like the video, or you have something else to say, then please leave it in the comments below. Also, don't forget to share, please. We need to get those views up. <laughs> oh, and the the alarm bell thing to tell you when videos come out because subscribing is not enough. See you next time. The present is horrible. The future looks bleak. Remember our childhood to get us through the week. We're getting re enthused. Back to the past and the things we used. We all know that our pasts were great. Escaping the things that today we hate. Getting re enthused. Getting re enthused. Getting re enthused. Getting re enthused.